All right, let's get to the questions. Maverick, up first. What's up, Ariel and team? With the exciting return of CM Punk to WWE, I can think of so many potential dream matches. Who would you like to see as his first feud? Thanks, gang, for everything y'all do. Appreciate it. Um, I, I, I got to be honest with you guys. I was locked in Monday night, 8 o'clock, USA Network. I wanted to see... If he would come out, of course, the stupid thing to do would be to have him come out first. And the ratings that came out today uh, would would imply. I saw Jedi posted the uh, the ratings that it was very smart to not have him come out in the first you know minute of the show. Uh, what is it? Up twenty nine percent versus last week in the one point eight eight four million people watched. 18 to 49, 863. So like this is, these are very good numbers. So of course you're going to leave them for the end. So I tuned in, checked out a little bit, came back 1030, locked in Randy Orton, this and that. And I was watching, I was watching. It's exciting stuff. Now, did I want a little bit more in the promo? Perhaps. Did I think that he would talk about AEW or Tony Khan, this and that? No. Um, the, the, I mean, vi- they they rarely, if ever, reference. I, I think they may have referenced one time AEW on WWE. Like the the top dog isn't going to reference the number two. Number two will always reference number one. And I'm not just talking about in pro wrestling in in every walk of life in MMA as well, right? Bellator is going to reference UFC. UFC is not necessarily going to reference Bellator or PFL. Um, but what I'm talking about is there's such there's such an amazing amount of baggage from the past 10 years that I thought maybe a reference of like the day he walked out back in 2014 or something, just a, just a couple more beats overall it was fine. And this, this whole thing is not going to be judged on the first promo. Remember when Bray Wyatt came back, may he rest in peace. The first promo was quite captivating, but then, as I've said on the show, I didn't like it. It just got a little bit too complicated along the way. And so I'm really curious to see where they go from here. I don't suspect that he wrestles before Royal Rumble. And then after Royal Rumble, maybe it's one more time before WrestleMania. Um, sometimes less is more. Uh, you don't need to have him in every backstage vignette and all this stuff. But ultimately, the question is, dream matches? I mean, there's a ton. Seth Rollins, top of the list. There's the history there, the comments. Um, and already it feels like they're building towards that. Roman Reigns would be number two. And then there's a plethora of all these guys uh, who he's not wrestled with or hasn't been in the ring with for quite some time. Uh, it does feel like he is where he should be and back where he belongs. And uh, let's see how it all works out. But um, it's captivating stuff. I mean, I'm not usually tuning in at 8 o'clock on on Monday, locked into USA Network to see you know the first segment of Monday Night Raw. It's been a while since I did that. If I'm being a thousand percent honest, I, I keep up with it. I I'm following the tweets. I listen to the podcasts. I read and stuff like that. But I wanted to witness this live. I wanted to see what he would say with the live microphone for the first time on Raw in about ten years. So I mean that speaks volumes. And uh, and I'm sure there are other people who are locked in for the entire three hours. Look at the ratings. So let's see where they go from here. Uh, they're on fire right now. I think I said, was it earlier this year? I said, I said, uh, Paul Levesque, Triple H is the best. I think I said best booker of all time. That was just to piss off people. Certainly the best booker of the year. Uh, and he's having an incredible run. And, and, I, and I must say, like, I don't think my guy Nick is ha- getting enough credit here. Uh, I, I feel like he was instrumental in, 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 in making this happen because of their previous relationship with CAA. And I see a lot of people saying like, and, and obviously Paul had to be involved because he's the booker man and, you know, he's the guy who's writing the shows and all that. But I don't know if Nick isn't there, I don't think this happens. I don't think. Um, I feel like he was instrumental in making it happen. And I want to see more credit thrown his way, all right? For goodness sakes. That's just me being you know, Homer. Um, let's get to the next question. Wow. This dude's name is need more Frank with like six K's. What's up with that? Is this you? It's supposed to be red light. Need more Frank. Yeah. But is this your burner? No. All right. Um, I just want to open it here because it's not, 
You didn't have it open already? I did. That, that kind of feels like they're playing two frames. Yeah. Well, let's see what the question like they're is. They're just like softening them up to, so they'll cho- he'll choose. I do it. have to say, the pandering doesn't work. I, I ignored the name. I like the question. All right. Let's okay. see. Yeah. Well, hey, here, here he is getting his question answered. First. Oh, actually, second. Uh, hello. I sure hope you and the crew are doing well. Can you please give your opinion on 1FC and the current news regarding their financial issues? Mike Hogan's, I think he meant Hogan's, comments about not being able to be a startup for 10 years and them going out of business. Have me thinking about what will happen to their terrific multidisciplinary talent and what this means for the MMA competitive ecosystem, i.e. fewer promotions, more consolidation, et cetera. Can you please ask Rick for his opinion on this as well? Thank you and the crew so much for everything you do. P.S. Mike was awesome. Always love the fighter content, but the behind the scenes business interviews are so unique and rare. Great work. Thank you. I enjoy them as well. Number one, you have to understand this. Uh, Kogan has been a part of Bellator for the past 10 years. Uh, he is not a fan of 1FC, just like he's not a fan of the UFC, just like he wasn't a fan of PFL before they acquired uh, Bellator. It, it, it was a competitive game. He wanted to win and they're all competing for, you know, similar fighters, market share, et cetera, et cetera. So him saying that isn't gospel. Uh, one FCs or one championships financial issues uh, have been documented on several different websites by several different journalists. And uh, I have no reason to believe that they aren't true. Um, and we've asked Chatri about some of these over the years, and he usually has an answer ready to go. Uh, how long can they... Continue like this, I don't know. I would say that they haven't made a big impact here in the United States. Um, There was a period around four years ago where they tried to make a big push in the United States when they signed Demetrius Johnson, when they signed Eddie Alvarez, when they signed uh, Sage Northcutt and they hired Misha Tate to help them out and all this stuff. And it, you know, the pandemic halted those plans and they came back to uh, America and their plans here um, in April in Colorado, and that was their first show, and it was fine. I just feel like they have a their thing is Asia right now. Their stars are are most popular in Asia, and they probably need to focus on that. I would say, in addition to all of that, I feel like the state of MMA and the current state of the MMA business, and even further, the current state of the MMA promotional business is quite poor right now, if I must say. And I, I, I stress MMA and not UFC. UFC is on fire, and perhaps more so, I don't want to say than ever, but it's been a while that it has felt this way. It doesn't feel like there's anywhere and anyone who is even close to them at the moment um, who could sell tickets like they can, who could build stars like they can, who could give people you know fights that they're excited about and, 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 and talking about and all this stuff like they can. And you know we had the we had the Pride era, we had the uh, the brief Elite XC run, we had the Strike Force era. Bellator was making a push, kind of fizzled out towards the end there. Um, again, if I'm a fighter, there aren't that many options right now. If you're a free, there was a period free agent fighter a few years ago, you could look at one. They were making a push. You could look at Bellator. You could look at PFL. You could look at the UFC. Bellator's gone. One isn't signing those guys. And then there's PFL. So it feels like we've gone from like four to two all of a sudden. Um, And if you're a UFC fighter who's looking for a big payday, or if you're a Michael Venom Page who's looking for the big payday, how many options do you have? One outside of the place that you just left? Uh, That's not great. Compare that to if you were a quote-unquote free agent in boxing um, and you want to sign with maybe PBC or Top Rank or Golden Boy, or Matchroom, or Queensberry, or Boxer, or, you know, like, there's there's options. It feels like there's way, way, way more options in boxing right now for fighters as opposed to in MMA. This isn't good. Um, and there's not a lot of talent. Like, the UFC is putting on so many events, plus Contender Series, plus Ultimate Fight. Like, there's just not a lot of talent to scoop up. That's why I said last week, one of the most important things that PFL could do is try to beef up their their talent scouting, if you will, fighter scouting, to try to go out there and get people before the UFC can get to them. Um, so I don't know what is going to happen to one. Uh, I would say they, they're they probably best served just focusing on the market, which is a pretty damn big market, that they're most popular in. And, you know, a one-off event in America isn't going to make or break you. 
uh, but they just don't have the names, it feels like right now, in America that will get people excited, that will sell a boatload of tickets, that, you know, you, you know, who knows? DJ may not fight again. Eddie's gone. Who, like, who, who are they coming to America with that's going to, like, really sell out a big arena um, and get people all that excited? So it's tough. I, I don't take everything that he said about one, you know, as gospel. Take it with a bit or a few or multiple grains of salt. Um, but, yeah, there's 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 been a ton written about their financial issues, about their financial future, about all this stuff. And uh, it doesn't sound great. And I want it to be good. I want, I want there to be more promotions. I think that's best for fighters. It's great for us, but most importantly, it's great for fighters. It's great for them to have options. It's great for them to have places to go. It's great for them to have places to negotiate with, have leverage with, all that stuff. And right now, I feel like it's pretty bleak. And it's weird to say that because the UFC is doing better than ever. The UFC is on fire. I'm just talking about the rest. And I think the sport is ultimately most healthy when there are other promotions thriving and coming up. They don't all have to be one. And it would be silly to think that you can be one in the short term, even really in like the next five, 10 years, but unless something totally crazy happened. Um, but I don't feel like there's any real two, three, four anymore. And uh, that's not good in my opinion. Zico. Hey, Ariel and the crew. I've seen rumors today that Kevin Holland will fight Michael Venom Page at UFC 297. Is this utter tosh or has some validity in your mind? Cheers, Z. So uh, Dana White did an interview with the Full Send guys. And I guess uh, in this interview, uh, they did it in the uh, UFC offices, uh, the war room, as they like to say. And they had that thing on the wall with the, you know, the names and the fight cards and all this stuff. And I saw some people saying that they were like pouring through it frame by frame, looking to cross-reference. Golly, that is exhausting. But Michael Venom Page is a big story, and he has not signed with the UFC just yet. And so, yes, I did check in on this, uh, and he still hasn't signed with the UFC just yet. Do I think when push comes to shove, he does sign with the UFC? Yes, in large part because of what I just said. There aren't a ton of options and I think he's at a point in his career now where he wants to be in the UFC and wants to test himself. But, you know, if someone's going to come in there with an offer that's going to blow him out of the water, I really think it's down to two places. It's down to PFL and UFC. I'm not breaking any major news by saying that. And I think if he had to pick, he would rather be in the UFC because he was just in Bellator for the past 10 years. And so on this board, for those that missed it, uh, for the January 20th pay-per-view, which I guess would be 297, um, it said Paige Holland. Now, I asked both sides, Nothing done. Has it been sort of floated? Yes, but nothing anywhere near. You have to remember, those boards aren't done deals. It's a mix of done deals, but also like wish list stuff. So let's see. Could it happen? Absolutely. Is the clock ticking? I mean, that card is in a month and a half from now. Um, so could it happen if, if they sign him at 298 in, um, in Arizona or 299? It appears that's going to be in Miami based on what uh, Sean O'Malley tweeted. Uh, 100%. The bigger question is, should Michael Venom Page sign with the UFC? I think yes. If it's a good deal, it's time. Is Kevin Holland a good first fight for him in the UFC? I think yes. I like that fight. Why not? I like that fight a lot. How do you feel about that fight, GC? You like that fight? MVP Kevin Holland for his debut? Feels like a an appropriate debut. Big fight would get people excited, no? Yeah, perfect. Give him a top 15 fight, really see where he's at. Gets an exciting guy in Kevin Holland, sign me up. I like it. I'm there. I mean, I was one of those guys pouring over screen, screenshot by screenshot. You were doing that too? Yeah, actually, it was kind of tough to find in the video. Like, the interview itself, like, it was really just for, like, five seconds. People go crazy on, this on like, an hour and a half long video. I, I, I don't know how someone originally spotted it. I think um, Corey Sanhagen versus Umar Nurmagomedov was on there too. Yeah, but that was for the February 10th one that Joe Pfeiffer's already been announced. Yeah, see, event. also, I know for a fact that that interview was taped at least a week ago, if not more. So Yeah, it had to be because Jalen Turner was also listed as fighting someone so there you as well. Go. Who, you, know, <laughs> you really did pour over the uh, footage. Wow. Well, I was uh, trying to see. I was trying to see if we could get a date for uh, UFC 300. There was the April, April 6th, 6th card. Yes. but uh, I have heard that, but I don't know if that's 100%. Oh, God. Is have that I bad? told you my dilemma with this? No. 
Oh my God! What? Tell yeah, me! Tell me! We might as well get it out in the in the open. It's here. a problem. I thought we were huge going. problem. A huge problem. If that's if that is the date, uh, two of my very good friends, very best friends in the world, uh, are both getting married that weekend, the fifth and uh, the sixth, oh Friday and the Saturday. I am in both weddings. Have already agreed to be in both, uh, and now I'm just terrified that that is going to be the weekend of UFC 300. It'll be a trilemma. Okay. Well, first of all, where are the two weddings? Atlanta. Oh, okay. So you don't have to travel. Well, I have to travel to Atlanta. Yeah, you have to travel to Atlanta. Right. I thought like one is in New York and one is in Boston or something. No, 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 no. They're both in Atlanta. They, like I, I'm going to make the weekend happen. The weekend's actually going to be a very fun weekend. Very much looking forward to it. Can't wait to see yeah. uh, my guys get married. But if it's UFC 300, it's just... Whew. You well, tell me I'm going to be standing uh, up there in, in a yeah. suit, you know, looking yeah. like that while we're on the prelims of UFC 300? Will you be devastated? Devastated, yeah, yeah, yeah. It will be like a, a shot. I, I, I really thought I thought we were going to go to Vegas. I thought so too. Well, I've actually I have presented this to you guys, and you guys were like, oh, "It is Final Four weekend, you know." They don't nah. really to compete. You did? Did you really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You actually said those exact words to try and make me feel better. <laughs> it is Final Four weekend. They don't like. To I I don't feel like. Please don't write that I'm saying it's happening that weekend. I I don't even think anyone knows at this point. But it's obviously going to be in April, right? It's oh, yeah, not, I, was, I was hitting the enhances heavy to try and see if I could find it. No fights listed. It's going to be in April. It's not going to be the first weekend of April. Why? Because that's WrestleMania, and now they're owned by the same company, and they're not going to go head-to-head. 300 and WrestleMania on the same weekend? That is the first weekend of April. Is it? I believe so, April 6th. Because that would mean March 30th would be the last one. WrestleMania. Mm, April 6th? Mm. <sighs> Yeah, I don't know. That would surprise me. Is that when WrestleMania is? Yes. So I. Th- I th- wow, this is another stake through the heart right here. No, I was actually, really considering going to being WrestleMania. Able to go to WrestleMania. No, nah, you don't care about that. Oh, this is a stake through the heart. Actually, but yes, a million times over. I, I would take. be shocked if they do WrestleMania up against UFC 300. I would be blown away, uh, I- I- unless they're going to do like WrestleMania during the day. I-, I just would be blown away. It's the same company. Why would you do that? All right, I like this. I would be I like shocked. This. I, li- I like where we're so at. So I'm giving you some like, hope. Oh, I for oh, some reason I thought of, it was. Yeah, I guess the six would mean March. If Final Four 29th. WrestleMania, we don't want to compete with that. Let's just do it. The so next WrestleMania weekend. is usually on Final Four weekend. Um, it's, I have confirmed that is Final Four weekend as well. Yeah. I mean, so, why, why do UFC 300 then? Get your own your own weekend. You're just competing with the Masters, golf. I would be boring, shocked. Snoozer, this is great news. This is great news. I mean, it's it's been keeping me up at night. I mean, it's just like let's see. What am I gonna do? A Watch me wedding? be wrong. I don't know, but like that would that honestly would blow me away. I have no intel here whatsoever. Because uh, if it's not, then we're in Vegas. I mean, it's just that easy. We'll be there. Let me just check something real quick true. here. It's always a problem. April Passover, Passover twenty twenty four. When is Passover twenty twenty four? So we're trying to thread the needle here. Oh, we're trying. There's a lot of needles to. I mean, be weddings, Passover. Oh, April twenty second. We're good. wow. Well, so, that, so we need that weekend. That we, that 13, April thirteenth is a prime. April thirteenth. Uh, come on, Dana. Dana, I know you're watching. Bro. Come April thirteenth. Let's thread that needle. That's what we need for UFC three hundred. Because if so, I mean, we're boots on the ground over there. I've, and, uh, honestly, after the show, I'll inquire more. Um, I haven't really asked anyone. I, I I did see the screen grab of the six, and I was like, all right, fine, yeah. the six. We knew it was going to be April, just by virtue of two ninety nine being in Miami. On uh, March 9th, I think it I, was. I would like to think, because that's all the boards they had up. The last one was the six. I like to think that they have their own wall dedicated to UFC 300. Was there anything under? That's going to be April 13th. Like, was there anything under those dates? No, no no fights listed. It was just TBA, TBA, TBA? Yeah. I think it may have even said location TBA. Mm. I mean, I was trying to enhance heavy. I was Allegiant there. Stadium? We were working. Wow. Hopefully not. Hopefully not. Hopefully we're talking April 13th. I'm talking like I've already purchased the suits and the ties. To no, you wedding. can't miss your friend's wedding. And these are like friends that go way, way, way back. Roommates, guy that I've known since I was no, like five. Like can't miss. I was supposed to do a watch party in Toronto for the pay-per-view. Oh. And uh, and now I can't because it's, uh, it's, it's one of my best friend's son's bar mitzvah that night. So can sorry. These people learn I've, I've screwed over Toronto like, can, can left you guys, and right. <laughs> can you guys not plan around the UFC yeah. pay reviews for yeah. us? Thank you. It'd be nice. Um, all right, so let's see. Chase, what's up, Ariel and crew? I have a different perspective on the Patty versus Tony fight. I'm curious what you think. Instead of the narrative that the UFC is feeding Tony to Patty as a stepping stone, maybe the UFC has realized that Patty has reached his full potential as a fighter and that his stardom has reached its cap. 
They know his current fan base will stay loyal and his antics over the past year have gained some haters. I suggest they are actually feeding Patty to Tony. Patty's gained a ton of haters for shit-talking Tony. Has he? I don't know. Has he been disrespectful of Tony? I haven't really seen that. Tony gets tons of love for being the one to shut up Patty, and people no longer want to see him retire. Interest in both fighters, next fights increases. Much love to you and the crew. Okay, I understand where you're coming from, but if that was in fact true, if they have lost all hope in Patty, which I don't think they have, if they feel like he's reached a ceiling, which I don't think they have, I, I kind of feel like they would have given him someone younger, someone who would have had a greater chance of beating him. You just don't know at this stage in Tony's career. And even if Tony wins the fight, I think everyone would agree he doesn't have much left you know, in the tank. Uh, back nine of his career, back three of his career, if that's a term. So I get what you're saying. I th- I would, if I had to pick one direction, I would say they're trying to get Patty a nice win over a legend like Tony Ferguson. Uh, again, understand what you're saying, but I don't think if you're trying to, for lack of a better word, kill off Patty, which I don't think they are, but if you're trying to do that, I think you give him uh, a younger guy who's more of a sure thing. Um also, I don't think they're saying that Patty has been talking shit, saying that if he lost, he would talk shit mm. and therefore gain stock of having more people dislike him and be interested in what his next fight is. Yeah, maybe. Uh, if if you fully believe in this, uh, you can get Tony Ferguson for plus 205 right now. Really? Yeah, pretty big underdog. Ultimately, I just think it's like a 50-50 fight and uh, it's going to be one of the most talked about fights that weekend. Uh, on a card that is pretty damn great. Seems like it was the right call based on the interest in the fight. And and and, and really, there's... Like, when you compare it to some of the other fights on this card, namely, off the top of my head, main event, Leon Colby, welterweight title, and the Ian Gary fight has a ton at stake because he's so close to, like, really taking that big uh, step against a tough guy like Vicente Luque. And people are talking about that fight, not to mention the flyweight title fight. People are talking about that fight as much as all the others. Uh, that to me tells me it's a fight that was worth making. Um, we'll we'll truly be able to figure out like, you know, what the full extent of the of the of the damage is or was once the fight happens. But I, I have no I I've I've no real issues with the fight, and I don't I don't think they're trying to kill off Patty. Do you agree with that? Let, if they're trying to kill off Patty, let me just go ahead. No, go ahead. Finish your thought. I was just going to say, if they were trying to kill Petty, I think they would have given him someone a lot tougher than yeah, Tony. Neither of these guys is at the point in their career where they're getting fed anybody. The, ne- neither side of this equation. Neither of them is good enough at this point that like anybody's getting fed to them. That's mm-hmm. just not a reality. You To be fed to some... that Like you're talking upper echelon level fighters. This is just a fight. It's just a fight. There's no, There's no ulterior like... We're putting this guy in here to like they're they're not good enough for that. Like all due respect, it's Tony Ferguson's fight. best years are right? it's are behind fight. him, and and Patty's on the way up and not shown to be that caliber of fighter. Um, yeah, it's 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 what you said. It's it's an intriguing fight, proper matchmaking. There's no side of this where it's like one guy is being sacrificed at the altar of the other. Yeah. Neither of them has shown to be the one to take advantage of that. That's not who they are as fighters. They are they are just in the mix. There's no, there's no being fed in either side of this equation. And by the way, you know how you know it's like a good 50-50 fight? It's because there's a whole camp of people who think one side yeah. is being fed and the other side that thinks the other can. You know, yeah, so like, exactly. That means, They've done well. Yeah. Uh, Stefan, Lanzi, Shalom, Ariel, Shalom. I return with the same question as last week as Frank mysteriously left me at the chopping board. I thought it was a good question, but I'll leave it up to you. All right, here we go. You spoke with Jake Paul about Netflix potentially getting into the boxing business. Is this a possibility for any of the PFL entities? How much of a game changer could this be for PFL or any promotion for that matter with the sheer number of Netflix subscribers worldwide? I know of at least one growing promoter who might call it, quote unquote, disruptive. Much love, your boy Lanzi. Uh, I have not heard anything regarding Netflix and PFL. Uh, It has long been rumored that Netflix is going to at some point getting into the live content business. And in addition to that, the live sports content business. 
they they dipped their toe in the Gulf waters, I do believe, very recently. I was listening to a podcast, the Marshan and Oran podcast, which is like a sports media podcast, and they were talking about how they weren't all that impressed with the broadcast. I think it was actually, uh, was it PGA guys against against F1 guys or tennis guys? I think they were playing off the shows, which one of them is produced, the, the, the Gulf one is produced by Vox Media um, in some sort of like, celebrity tournament thingy. Uh, I, I I have not heard anything about Netflix and PFL. Um, I, I again think that PFL is going back to ESPN. Uh, they want to, they want Bellator to go somewhere else to be on a different platform. Uh, maybe Amazon. Uh, I said on Monday, Amazon PBC close to a deal. Um, and this has gone picked up everywhere. And some people have asked me about follow-ups on that. It's unclear a, how much they're getting paid. Uh, that's PBC I'm talking about here. Um, I'm told it's not a time buy, but you, you have to know you have to know the deal, right? Like the the zone Matchroom deal was a great deal for Matchroom. Um, the ESPN UFC deal was a great deal for the UFC. The initial PFL ESPN deal wasn't a great deal for PFL. So just because you're on the platform doesn't necessarily mean that you're making a boatload of money. Uh, I suspect Amazon is a lot further along. I don't even suspect that. I, you know, just by virtue of the NFL being on there, uh, one championship being on there, other entities, a lot further along in the live sports game than Netflix is. Uh, eventually, I do think Netflix gets there, and I've not heard anything about them having any interest in MMA or PFL in particular. Um, so I'm really curious to see where this Bellator content lands. Uh, I think a much better chance of an Amazon as opposed to a Netflix. There's also Apple out there, but I haven't heard much interest in Apple. Um, Apple having interest in any sort of combat sport, uh, but it's it's fascinating days. Uh, there's WBD out there as well um, here in America, and that would be TNT, Turner, True TV, etc. Um, and I know there was some talks between PFL and them, uh, but I don't think that they are a player for this PFL deal. I know there was some talks between. Uh, them and PBC. There could be a second PBC home as well. Look out for that. A lot happening here, and it's going to get fascinating, even more fascinating in the world of sports TV because the NBA deal is coming up for the first time in like 10 years, and there are some people who think that they may go to some sort of variation of ESPN, Turner, Amazon, or Apple, maybe even NBC slash Peacock as well, and there's a lot of people who think that once that, only once that deal is done, then the other dominoes will fall. So anyway, uh, Netflix, fascinating, but I haven't heard them tied to PFL. By the way, uh, a few weeks ago, I think I was talking with you guys about the NBA in-season tournament. I have to say, I'm kind, I'm, would I like it more if Europe Ooh. was involved? No, but listen, if what I, yesterday I was All like, of a sudden the Knicks are in it. 1,000%. I completely Andre agree. Drummond getting fouled I, with listen, 10 minutes it, left in the third quarter down 33. Not bad. Not bad. That's good drama oh, right there. Bullshit. That's not drama, dude. <laughs> That's good drama. Ruining it. It's terrible. Come on. It's terrible. Late November, no one cares about Awful. the NBA in late November. Right, and I don't care about I the still in-season don't. tournament. I still don't care about Doesn't the NBA make me in late Knicks November. Knicks had next Tuesday. More. I'm kind of locked in. Get out of here. If the Knicks Garbage. If the Knicks could go to Las Vegas and win a trophy in my lifetime, this this might be my only chance to see the Knicks win anything in my lifetime. Would you buy a uh, in season tournament champions shirt, hat, all that, the merch if if you guys won the in season tournament? I think so. That's disgusting. This might be my only chance. Well, this is all. The, all this is is an assessment of the depravity of of your fandom, right? Like once that one thousand percent. We don't care because one thousand percent. Because I only care like yeah, you. My, I want spoiled. my team to compete for NBA titles. I don't yeah. care about this nonsense. Also, I'm, your I'm team not didn't interested. advance. My team did. Something Any chance they're going to get rid of it once they've Couldn't care less. this new TV deal? No. In fact, oh. I've only seen, like, I've listened to some of the, uh, you know, the pundits, Simmons, et cetera. They all love it. They all say it's great. There's a, there's a few things I don't, well, because it's given us a reason to care about November basketball. I just couldn't disagree more. It doesn't make anyone care more. What? Oh, that's so wrong. When we get to the semis in Vegas and it's going to be like a weekend of elimination basketball in a neutral territory, you're going to, in, in early December, you're going to be locked in. You're Eliminated th- from what? More more in season <laughs> games? Nah, there's a trophy. More state, regular bro. games. Oh, yeah. We know there's a trophy. It's on every court. Nah. It's every oh, it's every okay. social media I hate the court. pictures. I hate the court. I hate the jerseys. I hate all that nonsense. 
Knicks, Bucks next Tuesday. I'm locked in, baby. <laughs> I can't wait for I'm them to get in. bounced. Can, and you come in here and be like, uh, in season tournaments, the biggest on. crock of horse. Can you I could feel time. all the I could feel all the Knicks fans in my life rooting for the Heat of so that they would have the home court against the Bucks. Bro, uh, was, of course, we're a pathetic you bunch of losers. Me. Of course, <laughs> I fully uh, I fully agree with all this. I, I'm I'm at least glad you're up to it. One thousand percent. Yeah. But listen, life's too short. All right. Can I just get one championship in my lifetime? You the know, Bills are breaking my uh, heart. The Knicks aren't winning the title. It's a this side year. quest. Yeah, you've got the main goals, and it's a side quest. And you know what? I can support. I can support individual fan bases cheering for I'm that. I'm looking at. I'm looking at the no standings care. yesterday. I'm like, okay, so if this happens and then this happens, I'm not looking at the standings in November for anything. You know what I mean? The one thing I will say though, if they included some Euro teams in there, just some non NBA teams, G League, Euro, it would have made it that much cooler. Could you imagine? It, like, you know how the Pacers? The Pacers are in the top four here. Imagine one of them was Barcelona or Real Madrid, and there's like a little yeah, hundred percent. That would have been be way, way cooler. They, yeah, or if a G League if they team do made a run that, If they do that, then I care. If they do that, then I care. But these games that are already games on the calendar, it's I don't just, care. What am I supposed? It's, to, it's the same thing. Because you guys have a, a NBA 2K court. And I hate the court. The no, I said I hate the court. <laughs> I hate the trophy. I hate the 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 jerseys. Oh, is it kind of like a PFL right? Is is the NBA in season tournament sort of like the Bellator to the PFL regular season? Like we don't really know what it is, but it's just there as a side. No, quest. no, it's not that because it's literally the same games. There's nothing different. It's if not these, even if different. These players, it's not even a if different these players product. don't win the, the in season tournament championship, they're losing no sleep. Mm. They don't care. If they up the stakes, like the winner of this thing is guaranteed a playoff spot or something. That would be cooler. Yeah. yeah. Will, now, will the Knicks yeah, hang a banner if they win the in season tournament? This is a great question. And why, by the way, I, I, I take umbrage with the fact that you say the Knicks. Like, what about if the Pacers get it? They've never won an NBA title. Would the Pacers hang a banner? I know, but you. I know why you said the Knicks because there's always that picture, like, oh, uh, secured home court advantage <laughs> banner. <laughs> I mean, you guys can hang it right next to yeah. the to the Billy Joel 180 concert. Yeah, and that's <laughs> and, and that's a very uh, well deserved banner. Um, Billy Joel's is great. Sh- okay, it's a good question. Should the winner of this thing hang a banner? In my the fan opinion, base, no. yeah. If the fan base no, cares, I say no. I say they yes. should, but I don't <laughs> care. I, say, I, I say don't. No. I do not care. I if the, no. if when, the when you do it at the next regular season game, yes. If the wouldn't Cavs, care. You would. You're a liar. I no, would not. I'm yes, not. If the Cavs Last were playing night, in Vegas, I didn't even think for one second about oh, how many point differential do they need to blah blah. Didn't care. Don't. All care, I saw was Andre care. Drummond getting fouled. That's good. Down thirty three, <laughs> and the coaches having to explain <laughs> to each other why the fuck they were. No, nah, no. Nah, it was just. It was just Billy Donovan was mad, and so Missoula. Why? Had, of course he's mad. He's yeah. losing by thirty three, well, and they're what? fouling their worst. Guess shooting. what? Donovan should have known the rules, just like Missoula knew the rules. Ruining the game. That's not ruining the game. There's a lot. What of happened to the happening. game I love, Mark yeah. Jackson? Yeah, yeah, what yeah. Happened to the game I love. Load management. The, the 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 reason why this is happening is because load management was ruining the game, and so they had to get people, uh, you know, invested and give them a reason to play. Nate fought a bear. Hello, MMA Hour crew. This question is pointing at Rick, as he is the resident John Jones fan. But I'd like to hear the rest of the crew's responses as well. Tommy Aspinall. By the way, my kids. Ah, look at Frank. My kids are singing Tommy Aspinall at home because they were at the uh, the live show and they like the song. Aspinall, Tommy Aspinall. Is willing and said he wants to take on all comers. Specifically, Stipe, since John is sidelined with an injury. If Stipe and John do end up fighting for the heavyweight title and the winner retires without fighting our boy Tom, this belt shall forever be known as the UFC disputed heavyweight championship. Yes or no, please discuss. I mean, you can make a case that it's that already, because Francis never lost the belt, but nevertheless, your thoughts, Mr. Rick. Sorry, give it to me one more time. You, you check I have, it out on I have construction oh. at the house. I have construction at the house, <laughs> and there was some banging. Basically, he is saying Tom Aspinall yes. wants to fight everyone. And yeah. he has said, if John is sidelined with an injury, I'll fight Stipe. This is what Tom yeah. Aspinall said. If yeah. Stipe and John do end up fighting for the heavyweight title and the winner retires without fighting Mr. Aspinall, this man is saying, uh, Nate fought a bear, this belt shall forever be known as the UFC disputed heavyweight championship. Yes or no, please discuss. I added, no. I added that Francis never losing the belt already makes it somewhat disputed, but nevertheless, you say no, why? 
because nobody cares what the actual path to any of this is, as you just illustrated, right? John Jones is the only one in this conversation when Francis Ngannou held the title and never lost it. So like whoever is the UFC champion is by default um, the global heavyweight champion. And that's the only thing that matters. And then the only thing that anybody cares about, nobody will care about the nuance. Mm. It will be gone as quickly as it was gone. When Francis left the UFC, it happened real quick. John Jones became uh, the heavyweight champion right away yeah. and everybody moved on. So no, wouldn't matter one bit. I agree. Um, I would also say I would love, I don't think Stipe does it, but if John is going to be out for quite some time, sign me up for Aspinall versus Stipe. Uh, and the winner faces John. That's the most fair thing to do, and that should be. It for just the, becomes an ec- yeah. It, it becomes an economics thing. Is it worth giving Stipe Miocic that money to fight Tom Aspinall to essentially king him to become make him a king and now lead toward that John Jones fight, or do you reserve Stipe for John Jones? It's it's. I don't think it has anything to do with how the division is or moving or whatever. It just becomes economics. It becomes is it worth it to promote this and and make Tom, a heavyweight king, and then set up that John Jones fight. Because I'm assuming, by the way, in that I'm assuming that t- Tom smokes Stipe, like pretty. It's a tough fight clearly. for Stipe. It's a tough fight for Stipe yeah. at this juncture. Uh, I say, do Aspinall versus Stipe in Nottingham, sight of Stipe versus Stefan Struve twelve years ago. Stipe lost to Stefan Struve that night. It was UFC on Fuel TV. He can right the wrong back in England against their prodigal son. I mean, that's just... But here's my thing. Yes. Is that win over Stipe that significant for for Tom, right? In in the sense that, like, if he wins that, how how much of the fan base is going to say, ah, he beat up an old Stipe? You know, I don't know if it's worth the monetary cost to put Stipe in there, just quite frankly. No, I get that. Because I don't think Tom is going to get a huge benefit from it. Like, they're just going to be like, yeah, the young guy smoked the old guy. Moving on. We wanted John Jones anyway. This is what they Stipe's should. in a tough spot. Stipe, Stipe's in a in a tough spot. Like promotionally, where do you put him? John Jones was the fight, but now it feels it's like milk. It's like milk sitting out in the sun. He's in a tough spot. You know why he's in a tough spot? All they had to do was make that fight in November at MSG a couple of weeks ago for the vacant title, and then you do Stipe versus John as the legendary fight and no one cares if there's a belt attached and you let Tom go out there and fight Cyril Gunn or Curtis Blades or whomever. And this would have been perfect, but they didn't do that, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. Uh, Connor, hey, Ariel, whatever happened to the guy who did the fan-made UFC pay-per-view promo videos on YouTube? His profile was Nick the Face. Yes. I often wondered if he ended up getting hired by the UFC or another promotion. Absolute legendary promo video. Rick, do you remember back in the day this guy nicked the face? I remember him. And there was another one called Lookout Whale. Look at a whale. Look, Look at a whale. whale. Yes. These guys were this was <sighs> the internet was a much nicer place back then. And there wasn't as much content. And there were these guys. I'm 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 pretty sure this this is I mean, I think GC was like in third grade when these guys were making videos. And they would put out these amazing fan made. What was one that was so there was one that I think I watched over and over again. It might have been a John Jones DC one. Maybe before the first fight, or it could have been a Connor one. We're talking like six, seven, eight years ago, and I remember the the I, I even remember like the the end stinger was like a clown sound or something like that. If memory serves me correct. Anyway, these guys were great, uh, and there was a push I think on the UG to get one of them hired by the UFC to make the promos. I don't know whatever happened to those guys. Um, I don't think. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see if I can find it. Um, let's see the last time. Nick the face legend. That's a throwback right there. Nick the face. There he is. His last, his last video was 10 years ago. UFC 168 Weidman Silva tr- uh, two trailer. Maybe this is the one I'm thinking about a million views. There's another one here for 657. There's a bunch of these guys from back in the day. What was the other one? Look out. What was it? Look at a whale? Look out a whale. What a weird name. I, I don't know how any of this has aged, but I just remember GS Pimp. That was that was the, the original. Yes, there's the thing. Um, okay. His last upload was eight years ago. Wow. This looks like an old Dustin Poirier video. Yeah. It's definitely of an era for sure. Yeah. 
Uh, yeah, these guys, I don't know where they went, but that was a good time. UFC 83, it's crazy. It's like a, going into like some kind of uh, time capsule. I don't know what happened to them. I hope they're okay. And I hope they got hired by the UFC. Nick the Dane. We go from Nick the Face to Nick the Dane. Greetings and salutations. Spill the beans. Is Kayla coming to the UFC or is she going to stick around for the Cyborg Showdown and or Pacheco rubber match? Dat Dane Nick. P.S. Frank. Would you mind randomly switching up some of the soundtrack effects for snippets of Tool songs? You interested in that? Uh, That's the wrong kind of attention Mm. that I want. Also, I don't think we uh, have the right to do that, right? Like a snippet would probably fly under the radar, but again, nah, not cool. Um, Kayla to the UFC is a good question. Obviously, there was some talk like a year and a half or so ago. And you'll recall there was a there was an offer on the table that she signed uh, to go and fight in Bellator. She was going to fight on that Hawaii card. Was that earlier this year now? It might have been last year going into, or was that two years ago? Everything is blending together. It might have been earlier this year. It feels so long ago. Anyway, um, you know, there isn't really a 145-pound division in the UFC anymore. And I don't think she can make 135, as she showed us last week. Guns. I feel like the best move now is to stick around. And you've got the cyborg fight. You've got the, What's bigger? UFC is the biggest, no doubt about it. But in terms of actual competition, which is what she wants fighting some, you know, lesser known talent at 145 in the UFC or fighting Cyborg and Pacheco in PFL Bellator. Feels like it's a greater challenge to do that. She just might want a change of scenery. Look at what happened to Michael Chandler when he went from Bellator to the UFC. His his profile exploded. He became infinitely more popular. So she might want that, but I have not heard anything. And, and as she said... Technically, there's one fight left on her contract, but the reason why she's also technically about to become a free agent is because there's there's a, there's a term date attached to it, and they're not going to have an event, so it's it's essentially done. Uh, if I were them, I would keep her. She's a very uh, talented and marketable fighter, and if I were them, I would do the Cyborg Kayla fight tomorrow and have Pacheco fight the winner. If you roll the dice and do Cyborg Pacheco, A, you might lose Kayla and B you might lose that cyborg Kayla fight because Kayla might not want to wait and B cyborg might lose to Pacheco. And now you've just played with fire. Wait, Ola Ariel, short time listener, first time caller. Okay. I loved your cameo in the first edition of canvas magazine. What a great first edition. Thank you. Uh, did an interview with Katie Taylor's mom. I didn't even know it was going to go in this magazine and, uh, there it was. So yeah, it was cool. Uh, it was when I was there for the uh, the first fight with DAZN. I was wondering if there are any other MMA boxing magazines out there worth checking out. Thank you for everything that you do. Used to be a great market. Um, fight Magazine was great back in the day. Fighters Only was great back in the day. Um, there aren't, you know, Ring Magazine. I, I don't, is there any magazine out there that covers MMA that actually, like, I don't even think there is an MMA magazine. Am I crazy? Rick, you might know this. Yeah, I don't think there's any print anymore. I think everything's digital at this point. Do you remember the uh, the fight days and the fighters only days? I don't think fighters only prints a a uh, an actual no, magazine every. I month, don't think right? so, and I don't think Ring does either, unless I'm mistaken. I believe that they're only digital now. What's interesting is if you and and uh, GC might have seen this, the magazine market in the UK and in Europe is much different than here in America. You go to one of those stores like W H Smith in England, uh, you could you could find a boxing magazine or two. I didn't see any MMA magazines. You could definitely find a bunch of soccer magazines or football magazines, 442 and all that stuff. But I, I don't know. Uh, GC, you ever see any it's MMA just... magazines? Sorry. None of look, too. Yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know any of them. Fighters Only used to be one. Yeah. Canvas, though. Everything's going to be so old now. It's so tough. Everything's going to be so dated. Like, even back then, you know, by the time you got your magazine, it was dated. Now, it's like, it's it's impossible. You can't keep up. You can't keep up. That's, you have to be that's digital. 100%. That's 100 percent true. Uh, the magazine market was good when the UFC had you know eight events a year, or ten events a year, or yeah. something like that. Um, same with wrestling, but now there's just too much that happens. That plus the rise of the internet. By the time you get to the magazine, like the dude that you put on the cover might not be fighting. He might have been injured. The fight might have changed. Yeah. He might be fighting. 
It's just not. Especially if you're doing just a monthly about, magazine. Yeah. Yeah. Just think about like, let's say it was like right before Hamzat's two fights on Fight Island. You put out a magazine, you put it out, and then Hamzat Chamayev bursts onto the scene and is the guy that everybody's talking about. And your magazine's talking about some event from last month. Yeah. It's just, it's useless to everybody. So it just doesn't work anymore, unfortunately. Unless you're doing like real nice feature writing, evergreen yeah. stuff, stories, that's, that's lifestyle, and nothing to do with the sport. I don't even know if the audience day. wants that. I don't even Yeah, know I was going to say, why would yeah. you just make it a YouTube video? That's the thing. Yeah. I don't even know if the audience has the attention span for that anymore or the appreciation for Art. that. Like, there are great writers in MMA. Uh, our own Shaheen, Chuck, Ben, et cetera, et cetera. There's many others. And I, I just don't know if there's enough people that want to read a magazine once a month. I would do it. Are, are, are you guys get... physical reader guys or are you oh, digital? Yeah, gotta be. Like, do you, do you have Kindle? Or no. are you like you're, you're a Kindle guy, Frank? Physical. Uh, I do, but magazines are just, uh, I don't know if it's a soldier or what, but I, I just love a good magazine. Oh, okay. You are a physical guy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah me too. I'm a, I'm a big physical guy. Book, magazine. Me too. Do the I hate Same. Kindle. Okay. So all of us. Yeah. Newspaper. I'd rather read. All right. So they've the got newspaper. four. They've got four if they can put something good out. Oh, I would love it. If you could do a cool, like, I still subscribe to a couple of magazines. Slam. Oh, you uh, still get Slam? Oh yeah, still get slammed to the house. That's uh, I got GQ, got a GQ subscription. Nice. So if you see it, me, you nice. know, some nice clothes. Yeah, yeah, Whalebone, a cool local magazine here. Uh, yeah, I mean, if they made one, I, I always got magazines growing up. Sports Illustrated every me week. Too. Nickelodeon Variety. magazine, shout out. Variety, Mad magazine. Oh yeah, good times. Cracked good times. Cracked is great. Mad. Yeah. I uh, yeah, throwback. Wow. I recall the UFC magazine was solid back in the day as well. I remember that it was uh, it was sort of like a hybrid of UFC content and stuff or FHM or Maxim. You know, like they would have yeah, like, li lifestyle combined yeah. with the sport. Um, love it. Yeah. Love it. Love a good magazine. Love when you're at the airport and you get one for the plane. Uh, fresh. It's throw all it fresh back. and shiny. <laughs> throw it back. You know, Real nostalgia. magazines are back, baby. We just did it. We brought yeah, them I back. Wish. Wish. I know this. We're starting no one, really one ever up. Complained We're about starting one up. The ads in a magazine, right? Did you yeah, ever did like you just finish a magazine right and you're like, God, there's so many ads in there. You just flip right through. Go to a website. One ad is too many. I mean, GQ, the ones that I get now, the first 25 pages. Right, are ads. that is annoying. It's just like you're just flipping through ads and ads and ads and cologne. I used to love going to the magazine man. shop in Montreal. It was called Multimags, and, uh, or it was Maison de la Presse Internationale. And I would get all the American magazines, and it was so exciting. There was one slam that I used to carry around. Actually, the Sean Kemp one and also the, uh, the LJ one back in the day. I used to freaking walk around with that thing. I loved that. Those were great days. WCW magazine back in the day was great. Wow. WWF magazine back in the day Love was it. great. Love it. I mean, there was uh, there was like no better feeling than it's just like late July, early August. You go and get the fantasy football preview magazine. Oh uh, yeah, those yeah, were, yeah. Those were special times, man. Or I used to flip baseball through Beckett. Oh, baseball America. I used to flip out. through Beckett and Wizard and just look at like prices of things. Like I would just Beckett? be looking for like yeah. what is East this Bay? worth? Yeah, Any East Bay guys. East Bay here? for sure. Shout out, oh yeah, man. East Bay, was, but wasn't East Bay more of like a, a catalog? Shopping catalog, yeah, yeah. But it was still fun to flip through. I mean, man. Oh yeah, I love Ooh, that. Back. Should Consumer we start culture, one? baby? Should we start one? We're starting. Yeah, one. I mean, it's, we it, feel, it feels it. like it feels like magazines are thriving uh, at ESPN when when ESPN <laughs> Mag went under. That was good times. <laughs> oh yeah, that's Can right. We do a radio show too. Yeah, yeah. yeah let's do magazine and radio shows. That's how we will spread the, the MMA word. rag <laughs> and the uh, MMA air. But uh, do check out, if, if you're able to get it, that canvas uh, is a little bit more highbrow. It's sort of like Victory Journal, if you know what that is. I know you know what that is, uh, with the very nice photography, thicker coffee table style. Yeah, man, uh, man, now we're talking. And boxing is a great sport for something like that. A little bit, you know, some, 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 some panache, some class, things of that nature. So uh, do check that out. Chris, there was a lot of talk about PFL not having the star power this past weekend to justify a pay-per-view, especially with the $50 price tag. Is it possible that this is all due to Kayla Harrison's previous contract negotiations? If another promotion had offered her a lucrative contract with assurances that she would be featured on a pay-per-view card and PFL matches that offer, they would be obligated to put it on pay-per-view just for the sake of meeting their contractual obligations. If memory serves me correct, something similar happened when Bellator matched UFC's offer Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera, for Eddie Alvarez. Thanks for the entertainment, Chris. P.S. I still want to send in my heel one shirt that I got on the UFC 290 broadcast into the studio to be signed. Just need that mailing address. Uh, absolutely, you can send it here. Frank, do you know how to reach out to this person? Uh, yeah, 
All right. Um, and no, I'll take care of it. I uh, appreciate that, Frank. Thank you. Sure. Uh, I just don't know how to reach. I mean, I don't know how to get in touch with Chris. You're the king. I got this. No, they are not doing a pay-per-view because of Kayla. Uh, they were doing pay-per-views before they re-signed Kayla. They just, for whatever reason, believe that the end, uh, you know, the, the, the season finale should be on pay-per-view. I very much disagree. It should not be on pay-per-view. Your best night should be available for all. You want to put it on ESPN plus fine. That's somewhat of a paywall. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a tighter paywall. Um, meaning it's just, I don't even know how much is, well, what is ESPN plus these days? Seven bucks, eight bucks. Feels like they're raising it every yeah. week. It used to be five. No, it used to be four ninety nine. The initial was four ninety nine, right? Yeah, initial was four ninety nine. That's how they hooked you. Now they've yeah. been raising it every month since. Uh, that's fine. Fifty dollars is a big ask in this day and age, especially when UFC pay per views are monthly. And you know, if you're a fan who's going to buy PFL, you're buying UFC pay per views, and you're spending what? What are those? Seventy four ninety nine. Last I checked. Something of that. Uh, seventy nine ninety nine. Seventy nine now, so that's a lot. Uh, I would not put it on pay per view, but no, do not blame Kayla Harrison for that decision. Joe M, a quick two hitter for Ariel. Are you on the Cooper out bandwagon? Absolutely not. We've been here before with the great Stevie Cooper. I know that some fans are blaming him for some of the recent performances, the late substitutions, but you know we've dealt with some injuries, uh, namely Teo Awoni. He's out until February 24th, last I read. And, uh, you know, Brandon left. I think that was a big blow. Uh, a lot of new faces coming in. Uh, Alanga has been a bright spot. He's been fantastic. Um, Murillo has been great on defense. Uh, I, don't blame, I don't blame Steve Cooper for the loss on uh, Saturday to Brighton, although it was a tough one. And I really thought that they were going to make the comeback. We were here in October of last year. Everyone wanted Stevie out. If they would have fired Stevie Cooper last year and brought in Patrick Vieira, no chance Forrest stays up. Stay the course. Keep the faith. Give him more time to gel the team together. Everything will be okay. I wonder what happened to Matt Turner. Matt Turner hasn't played in a while. And uh, he just got benched. I think it was after, was it after the Liverpool game? I don't know. I thought he was doing okay. Um, would love to see him back. Anyway, who will you support next season when Knott's Forest are in the championship? Screw you, Joe. What is this? Frank, how can you put this? I, I'm telling you right now, this is my club. And, and can I address this thing once and for all? Once and for all. The first time I ever talked about Premier League teams on this show was Leicester City when they were going on that incredible run. That was clearly a gag. Go back. You could pull up the stupid tweets. They're out of context. That was clearly a gag. I was jumping on the bandwagon. I, I, I might have watched a collective 30 minutes of their matches just because towards the end it was fascinating. But I didn't really care about soccer. My kids at the time were four, five, six. Then the next time I was a fan of a soccer team was Everton. And that was the whole thing with me, Balmali, and Darren Till, and Patty. I can tell you right now, while I was an Everton fan, I did not watch a collective minute of any of their matches. And I think that lasted for like a year and a half or so. Again, it was part of a gag. I couldn't tell you a single person on the team. I didn't follow them X, Y, and Z. Last year on this show, what did I say? I said, I want a proper team. I want to I want to follow a team. I want to get invested in a team because my kids were getting into it and I was getting into it and it just seemed like such a fun sport and league to follow, Premier League. And so we picked Nottingham Forest. You remember all that? And I like asked GC, I'm, I'm watching every single game. I'm living and dying with every single play. When my kids have soccer during the games, I'm listening to the games. I truly, truly care. So if you want to bring up the old tweets, if you want to say that I jump around, which I've never done in any other sport, I'm still a Knicks fan. I'm still, what drives me nuts is like people say, oh my God, I can't keep up with how many uh, teams you support. Yes, you do understand that in different sports, there's different teams, right? Like you do understand that the Knicks don't play football and don't play baseball and don't play hockey as well. Like you're allowed to have different teams that you support. You, you understand that. I've never wavered on the Bills even though it is heartbreaking what they do to us each and every year. Still a Knicks fan through all the shit, through all the ups and downs. I would be a Montreal Expos fan, but they left. Would never be a Nationals fan, so I had to adopt a new team. Will never be the same, but, you know, it's Canada, so we support the uh, the Jays, Canadians, hometown team. 
And the soccer thing, I just explained, that was all a gag for the program. Rick was around during the Leicester City days. The Everton days was more ESPN, if memory serves. And uh, I never watched any of the games, but now I love it. Now it's like yesterday I was watching uh, Champions League on uh, Paramount Plus and I was all in. What a comeback. Man City. I mean, I, I could, I could, pr- he mentioned Cam Jordan there. No idea who that is. Is that crazy? Is that a shocking statement? Yeah, it's pretty crazy. He's, he's a, he's a pretty, uh, pretty I just, good. I've always said it. What have I always said? I watch the Bills. I don't watch the NFL. Um, but I will watch Man City Leipzig. I will watch uh, Liverpool against uh, Man City again. Man City, but because that was the big game over the weekend, um, what a game that was as well. Uh, I will watch Brighton against Bournemouth. I will watch Luton Town against Burnley. I, I just really enjoy it. I enjoy the atmosphere. I enjoy the skill, and I think it's probably because my kids are so into soccer. I mean, it's some weekends four games. Saturday, Sunday. So I'm watching it. I'm breathing. I'm, 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 we're talking about it. I didn't even, a couple of years ago, I didn't even know what a fullback was. I, I thought a fullback was Frank Gore. You know what I mean? I didn't realize it was a fullback in soccer as well. A uh, right back. You know what these things are, GC? Left back, central attacking mid. I didn't know about any of this stuff. Yeah, but I'm still learning, you know? Yeah, but my kids are telling me all this stuff. Wait, what? Got it. It has been secured. I've, I've, uh, I've chosen not to get the physical EAFC 24. Going to get the download version because I feel like they're going to ruin it if we get the physical. Mistake? What do you think, Frank? I mean, the disc can't be scratched anymore. So You think I should get it? I mean, I understand the idea of having a physical disc, but... um. There's a part of me that really wants to get it because, and then the clock is ticking now. You um, already got the digital one? No, I didn't get it. You, I don't think you can oh, buy wow. the digital. I, don't you have to get it like once your thing is hooked up? Um, yeah, you're right. You don't get codes for games anymore. So here's my thing. There's a part of me that wants to give them the game. You know, like you touch it, you feel it, you pop it right in. But then there's a part of me that is worried about the scratching. And then there's a part of me that, doesn't it take a long time to download the game? No. Oh, especially uh, especially yeah. not if you're like plugged into Ethernet. So, so how long does it take? It, Wi-Fi? Maybe thirty minutes. Oh, that's Wi-Fi it? could take longer. Like, what are we thinking? I don't know, a couple hours. Thirty minutes. Oh, really? All right. My Wi-Fi is pretty yeah. good. I've I've had some games that take a long time. Thirty on minutes. Thirty minutes Wi-Fi. That's I actually strongly absolutely. disagree here with Frank. I I, I vehemently disagree. Well, As well, someone who what are you owns disagreeing a on? PS5. What are you disagreeing? And downloads on? games on Wi-Fi. Thirty minutes. 30 minutes. Make sure your net is secure. Yeah, I think it'll take longer than 30 minutes. Put it on the DMZ. <laughs> but how long are we talking here? I mean, man, maybe a couple hours at the longest. What, wow. is, what is DMZ? Uh, the demilitarized zone on your router. <laughs> you could talk offline. I don't know what that is. Uh, so wait, are, are Frank, you're saying get the digital or don't get the digital? I say get the disc. We, uh, As I was explaining, you can't really scratch the disc anymore. But you're, you're, it's you're nice to have the physical totem. The other option is totem. there might be a branded like FIFA gift card that you could give them that. Mm-hmm. But I think the uh, the disc speaks volumes. Something they hold on to later. They show your grandkids like, oh, look what uh, grandpappy gave me back in Hanukkah of 2023. Mm. Blow the dust off of it. Mm. GC, what do you say? Yeah, I've always been a physical disc guy. Mm. Like like getting the disc. I don't think you have to be wor- worry about them breaking it. I, I think you'll be all right. All right. It's hard to get the disc. They're uh, they, like I don't think you could get it on Amazon. Or it takes, I know a guy. You know a guy? Yeah. All right. Um, thirty minutes away. Thirty minutes away. I'm just <laughs> harping on the thirty minute wait. Oh right, got it, got it, got it. Got it. Uh, anyway, I don't even know how do we get into all of that soccer anyway i like i like watching it i like supporting it anyone who has a problem with me supporting nottingham forest you can suck an egg and i ain't going nowhere and by the way moot point they're not getting relegated not this year uh adam shalom ariel seeing cm punk make his epic return to wwe i'd like to know what your entrance music theme song would be in wwe baruch hashem baruch hashem adam hmm. um i mean it'll be hit him up take money First, though, 
and then it says on the screen, "Heal Wani," and I come out and I do the I do the the uh, Scott Hall. Not to that music, of course, because my other music is playing. And I do, you know, did you guys watch the Misfits card? Uh, they actually like it was the closest I ever got to a WWE entrance. They had my name on the screen, and uh, my guy Ade was like, "Mr. Ten Seven, Mr. Helwani knows, Mr. El Nariz, Mr. Was there another one? Helwani." And I came out like this. Anyone see that? Did you catch that, Frank? Absolutely. We talked about this. The the, 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 the broadcast team blew it. The uh, the camera angle was they went to the was crowd botched. shot, huh? Yeah. For, yeah, they went to the wrong shot. Uh, they, but they, how about you getting the headline slot? You were yes. you were last. Chris Eubank, over, your boy, was first. Was he first? It might, or maybe it was Idris Virgo. I think he, I think Virgo was first. He was second, and then Hawani uh, main event. Talk? Chris Eubank was chief support know, to Hawani's entrance, and it was crazy. Scenario. I couldn't believe it as well. Can we talk about this Chris Eubank situation? What is going no, on here? What is I don't want to talk about it. There my is heart no, is being ripped out of my chest. This thing, the amount. Of, By the way, we should clarify. It's not really a Chris yes, Eubank it's situation. A ben it's thing. more a Connor it's Ben kind of, situation. No, because I was watching an interview yesterday with Eddie Hearn and uh, Charlie Parsons, Boxing Social. Shout out. They do a great job. They have a great good cop, bad cop thing going on. It's very fun. And and Eddie was saying in the interview that it was more of a Chris situation. Now, this is before today's news, but that Chris takes a long time to sign on the dotted line, but he felt confident. February 3rd, Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, blah, 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 blah. Oh, uh, and then I see today, actually, I saw it from your Twitter feed because you posted the Paulo Costa pick. Now it's not. So is it dead? I haven't been on, obviously. Is it dead now? What's the problem? I don't know. I, I, this is, Can you know we what just this move is? On this is Habib and, this uh, is Habib and Tony for me. I'm not going to care until it's here. I don't, I can't how, think about it. But here's anymore. my question. If in fact he did test positive, how long should he be out for? I yeah, don't even, who knows? I mean, I'm good. Come back. Let him come back. What are we doing here at what this is point? Going on? Um, what, are, okay. what are we doing here? Yeah, I agree. I mean, just <laughs> it seems if if from the outside and and I am un, uninitiated, it really seems like this is the BBBOC not happy with how he handled the process and trying to take it out on him. Like that's that's what it looks like. It, it really does not look like justice is being served at this point. And if and if they aren't sanctioning i don't think matchroom is putting on this fight so they're probably going in a different direction yeah. unfortunately well i mean we talked about how you have to do this fight in the uk but do you maybe yes maybe uh, saudi no you can't maybe do that. saudi gets also it. also i i think maybe i'm wrong because they just had him fight in orlando if if the bboc is saying no to him fighting i don't think he's then going to go take him somewhere else where there's no sanctioning body I think that would be a slap in the face for the for the but for jurisdiction. How long? That, how long is this going to last? I know it's it, this is the crazy. This is absolutely it, it's dragging on forever. And I know some people will be like, "Oh, you're just favoring the matchroom guys for whatever reason." Don't work for matchroom. Have nothing to do with matchroom. Uh, I'm just wondering how long this thing is going to last. So the 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 initial positive test was over the summer of last year, and then the fight was supposed to be in early October. Uh, and I know there are two positive tests, but the fight fell through the first week of October. It's now the last week in November, and this fight is supposed to be in February. So we're talking approximately like a year and a half, a year and three quarters. How long is this drama going to... And every time I go on to talk sport, this, that, they're talking about this over and over and over yeah. and over and over again. Oh, my gosh. My, my issue isn't even just with the timeline itself, which is... which. Obvious, you, you've highlighted it nicely. It's also with the fact that everybody was suggesting, well, Connor Ben needs to appeal this then. If he's innocent, let him let him make his case. He's done this. Like we we've gone through the actual process. The things have happened that needed to happen. What is the holdup? What is the resolution? If you're gonna say, okay, retroactively, we're suspending him for this long and this is it, definitively, blah, 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 then say it. Or if we're not, let him fight in the meantime until things are sorted. It does the 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 holding up of his career doesn't really make sense to me uh, with the lack of clarity around this. I also will say the fight is a bit of like a you know square in a circle. I think Ben is like one forty seven and uh, oh, I don't care. A, I mean it's a bit of a big jump. The fight would never be made if it wasn't for the last names. But I guess that's the whole point, well, right? 
the first time, yes. Now this now time, there's, there's so much drama yeah. involved. They have their own story. Oh, give, uh, I, you know, this is this is killing me. This is I'm I'm dying on the inside talking about this. Add it to the Day of Reckoning card, December twenty third, or add it to the Tyson Fury. <laughs> no, no, it can't be Tyson Fury. That's not a matchroom card. Um, yeah. Truly though, if I, I mean, I, I think you're right. I think you're ultimately right that like Eddie Hearn does so much business in the UK, it can't. would not behoove him to to no. to do it, but. If this is the way that the fighters are going to be uh, treated, hey, maybe this is not the place for the boxing. Maybe the boxing goes somewhere else. Saudi Arabia wants it. Nah, it's it's, it I don't get it. I don't get it. Yeah, it doesn't look good. Has Has anyone said it's dead? That I haven't seen yet. Okay. But it just seems like it hits a roadblock. It, Every it's time. A, Every, one month it will be the fight is on, is on. here we go it's and then two done. weeks later the fight is off every single time every single time uh shane hey ariel wait, Kurt, wait. yes follow-up question from adam oh like how often do you fantasize about walking out <laughs> to like a fight uh by the way uh is this an actual this is a me question? Okay. asking uh not often no i've never wanted Once to a be, month no 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 no. i've never wanted to be a wrestler i've never wanted to be a fighter i've never i, I i've dreamed of being the guy calling the fights or okay. honestly the dream was never i never really wanted to be a play-by-play -play guy uh definitely didn't want to be a color analyst i've dreamed the, the 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 one thing that i've definitely dreamed of is being the howard cosell guy in the ring that i love that more than anything the guy in the ring after the fight sweaty we did it your feelings your emotions i love that uh i love this because it's free format i love the interviews like those Ariel Meets interviews that I've done over the last couple of years with the WWE guys or what we used to do back in the day in the in the um, hotel rooms, Casey and I, with DC and Jones and DJ and Michael Bisbee. Love that. Um, but I've never dreamed of being the guy walking out about to fight or compete. I, I'm, I'm, sure. not, I'm not that guy. And then how long ago did you fantasize about being that guy in the ring? Was it like when you already had started things or while you were still in school? Oh, the guy holding them? the mic? Yeah. Um, well, I've always been captivated by the magic of TV and the characters on TV and the, the announcers and the broadcasters. And so I would say like, maybe the thought started to come into my mind. I, I, I remember watching the NBA on NBC in the seventh grade, sixth grade, seventh grade, I was really getting into basketball. And then I started to really, so I always loved, I love pro, like pro wrestling was the first thing I ever loved. Um, and I remember renting WrestleMania 1. WrestleMania 1 was in 1985. I probably rented it in like 87 because 85 I was three. Oh, wow. Um, and then I started to like really get into wrestling. And I and I loved the characters like Gorilla Monsoon, who was the play-by-play -play guy, or Jesse Ventura, Mean Gene Okerlund backstage. So I would pretend to be those guys. Um, and then when I would get into, when I was getting into boxing, seeing Larry Merchant in the ring and later on uh, Max Kellerman, and then starting to learn about the history of boxing um, and Cosell, obviously, with Ali and all those great moments. Um, there was just something magical about TV and how simple it was back in the day and how there were only a few channels and everyone was watching either on TV or listening on the radio. Um, and these were seminal moments. Like We're talking about the NBA, how none of this matters in November and December. You can never say that about a fight. Even if it's a low-level fight, every single fight is so important. It's like that question that we always ask, biggest fight of your life? Of course it's a big. The next one is the biggest fight of Colby Covington's life, is the biggest fight of Leon Edwards' life, is the biggest fight of Tony Ferguson's life because of what it means right now and what the ramifications are if they win or if they lose. And I love that. It can never just be a ho-hum, you know, ordinary walk in the park. Um, so I would say like ninth grade is when I started to really, you know, and I saw the Sports Illustrated about Syracuse and read that, and I've told the story before. And then when I got to Syracuse and started to be around other journalists and get to go in a radio booth and all that stuff, this is back in 2001, the, you know, the, the, the wheels really started to turn. But there was the longest time where I kind of put that, that particular dream off to the side because it was unattainable. Because in the sport that I was covering you know, the most, the UFC, MMA, you couldn't do that job if you were, you know, not a part of the promotion. Um, and, I, and I never oh, wanted right. to be a part of the promotion. You know, I wanted to work for the network. Um, so that's why the boxing opportunities are exciting for me 
because, you know, I wasn't working for Misfits. I wasn't working for MVP, et cetera. When I'm doing this stuff, I'm working for the, uh, the network, Showtime, DAZN, TNT, et cetera. Uh, that is more my speed. And that's no, only in the fight world are you presented with that dilemma. Um, you know, if you're doing the NFL and CBS, you're not working for the Chiefs or the Bills. You're working for CBS. If you're doing the NBA on ESPN, you're working for ESPN. Now, there are some broadcasters who, uh, like Mike Breen, the best play-by-play -play guy in, in, in the basketball world right now, uh, I know Rick would say uh, the great, um, oh my God, Ian Eagle, uh, but he works for the Knicks, so that's a little bit different. But I would say those guys don't really fancy themselves as uh, journalists per se. Um, you know, so it's not as much of a conflict, if you will, but uh, I, would, I would prefer to not have any conflicts. Some might say I'm dumb. Uh, Lord knows I've turned down a hell of a lot of things. I mean... Uh, I'll be 100% honest with you guys. Uh, BKFC asked me if I would be open to going this weekend. I, I just can't do it. Would be fun. Would love to do it. Can't do it. It's, uh, it just leads to too many problems. Uh, Shane. Hey, Ariel. Curious on the boys' thoughts on this far-off potential fight, as I feel it hasn't been mentioned often. Bo Nickel versus Joe Pfeiffer. Sell it as the battle of Dana's boys. Who would win? Could we actually th see this happen one day? Sure. I don't see why not. Same weight class. Love the fight, not right now. Pfeiffer a little bit further along, but love the fight. And uh, I think I heard Bo Nickel maybe fighting in Miami. Am I crazy? I think I heard him say that somewhere. Um, but I like the fight a lot, but not right now. Pfeiffer's a little further along. He's fighting Jack Hermanson, which is a great opportunity for him. Big name, top 10 guy. Wish it wasn't at the apex, nevertheless. When's the last time we saw Bo Nickel? Was it... Uh, was it the Miami card last year? No, was it 285? <sighs> when was it? What was it the March? Yeah, was it was yeah, it the John Jones card? It was before the Miami card. Yeah, that's right. No, no, no. July 8th. Uh, yes. Uh, the late replacement Val Woodburn at International yeah, Fight Week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Last minute. Val Woodburn. Everyone loved him. Minus 1600 favorite. Was that it? Yeah. Supposed to be fighting uh, Trishon Gore. Right. Um, Drumble, with PFL acquiring Bellator completely, do you all think there's a chance of any trades with UFC? No. And oh, They got the, 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 the Bellator guys now as opposed to waiting until January so that the UFC wouldn't have an opportunity to take them. But if you're the UFC, how many guys on that roster do you truly want Three that you truly want. Would you say Usman, Patchy, Eblen? Am I missing someone? That you truly like are, 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 are entertaining a trade. Three? And are any of them making that big impact upon being... I would love to see trades in MMA. I just don't see it happening. Like an impact like a guy like Ben Askren, who we were talking about for years and years and years about whether or not he can hang in the UFC or whether he should be in the UFC. They're just not at that point at the moment. And at some point, those guys are going to be free agents. And at some point, the UFC will have an opportunity to go there. And they most likely, as it is the case with 98% of the fighters out there, end up in the UFC in some way, shape, or form. Danny, Ariel and crew, how do you manage to navigate the ugliness that so much of the online MMA community presents, either to you or the fighters? The new Twitter algorithm seems to send so much more of it my way it can be disheartening, to say the least. I love the information I can access online, but is it worth being exposed to the obvious hate that is so prevalent? Uh, I mean, I guess it depends on, you know, what you're looking at, what you're consuming. Uh, the internet can be an ugly place. It can be a very divisive and toxic and gross place, but you just got to try to find, um, you know, you, you got you to try to find the stuff that doesn't lead you down that path. Uh, I try here on the show to be a celebratory positive place. I know some people think I look for beefs and stuff like that, but the truth is, you know, I, I really do try to celebrate the sport and the athletes and talk about it in the best way possible or the most entertaining way possible without 
um, so much, you know, baggage and toxicity and crossing lines and things like that. And yeah, you know, Twitter X, it is feeding a lot of that stuff. Uh, you just have to try to do your best to not get sucked in. I don't know what to say. Uh, there's a lot of weird shit out there. Um, but there's a lot of good shit too. And you just have to try your best. I don't, I don't really have, I don't really have like a great answer. What, what do you think, GC? What's, what's the best way to go about this? You know, it's all there. You just have to try to ignore it. And yeah, I was going to say, you just ignore it. You just move on with your day. Yeah. I feel like Rick's always the one handing out, uh, you know, that is true. Great philosophies on this, especially the whole TST on. Monday. Yeah. Rick, what do we do? <laughs> you know, a lot of toxicity out there. Fans are disheartened. They want their fights. They want their stories. They want their positive stuff. They don't want all the other shit. The power is in your hands. You, you are the curator. You are the one deciding what you consume. And maybe it's time to unfollow some people that you follow. It's time to potentially move from one platform to another. Don't go seeking things that are not going to be beneficial to you. Like, I know it can be hard and addicting and it's not as easy as like, just ignore this, but it kind of is just ignore this. Like if you are not having a good experience on that platform, cut that platform. If there's something that you can't live without on that platform, sure. But if it's just for entertainment and you're finding you're on the negative side of it more than the positive, snip it. Time to cut it. Move to something else. Don't uh, don't let it warp your mental space uh, because you feel like you can't be separated from it. Separate. Time to go. Just like any relationship. Do, do you feel like Twitter throws more of this stuff your way these days? It depends on what feed, I guess. Like on the For You feed, there's definitely more potential for that. Um, on the following feed, I mean, again, as I said, you're the curator, right? Like you're deciding who you follow. If people that you follow are putting this stuff in your feed, unfollow them. Or if you feel like you can't be on Twitter anymore, get off Twitter. Go choose, another, uh, go choose a new platform. Can I ask you a question? Think, when did the whole algorithm think, thing start? Like, I hear that um, term so much, and I understand yeah. it. When did it start? I don't know. Sometime in the in the early 2010s, I, I would I would say, as the platforms got more mature, that they realized ago, huh? that... Oh, yeah. As the platforms got more mature, they realized that if you're just getting things from people that you follow, the, the networks are too small, the communities are too small, you need to be able to discover new people. Otherwise, the growth is impossible. Um, so, yeah, they prioritized that. But again, you can find ways to like Instagram is probably uh, a good platform if what you're looking for is not a lot of the discourse and just content and with a feed that you've curated. You can probably find that. There's there's options out there. We have to take some responsibility. It is all it is not just all these uh, benevolent platform things that happen. Like certainly there is part of that and certainly they are uh, powerful. Um, but you don't need to be on them. There's no, there's no, there's absolutely no requirement. Is Instagram more positive than Twitter? See, this is the thing. This is what I'm kind of saying, right? Like but the like, platforms I, I, don't have a voice. It's, it's your people that you follow on the platform. No, that but I, the voice. I, I do feel like on the, uh, for you page, there's a lot of shit there that I don't, I mean, like, there's there's political stuff there's all this other stuff that i never engage with whatsoever and it's still there well the dirty secret is it's there because everybody wants that right we've collectively oh, as a society and as a group decided that this is the content that we engage with the most and is most compelling that's a that's a larger question the meta of <laughs> where are we going as a society sure, i think is reflected I feel like the instagram, in the social like, if i go on reels on instagram and i just like scroll up i feel like it's a lot more in my wheelhouse of the things i'm interacting with do you follow the exact same people on both platforms no but it's the same type of content is it one for one that, i don't know that's not that's not what i, I asked just, though. I see if a lot you of follow the same street people fights and stuff like that like what is these i don't want to see these street fights it's, these... it's tangentially related enough that enough people in your orbit seem to like that, um, yeah. or or you've searched similar enough things that it's I, trying. I can assure you, to... I don't search any political or any let street me, fights. What it's trying to do, 
and failing at is trying to give you content that you actually like. Right. That's what it's actually trying to right. do. It's trying to serve you things that like, hey, you liked that. Maybe to keep you'll you like on this the platform. Yeah, to keep you there. But it it is not doing it sufficiently. And this is where the tweaking comes. Unfollow some people. I l let me just say this about that. about MMA in particular. Believe it or not, this has always been a thing. Uh, we could talk about. Yes. It's always been a thing. It you may be a little bit newer, but it's been a thing. It was just on different platforms. It, it used to be on the UG or SureDog um, or, you know, other places. Uh, and, and Twitter has been around for a long time. It's always been a thing. It will always be a thing. You just have to do your best to try to find the stuff that makes you feel good about the sport. Uh, AJ Hawk, what, what, what? Uh, greetings, Ariel. Well, I don't want it to happen. It seems as if the Apex are going to play a prominent role in 2024. Are we slowly going into a UFC world where pay-per-views are going to be the only events with crowds and every fight night is going to be at the Apex? Much amount of no, absolutely not. In fact, I feel like the Apex cards are, are less and less. They're still going to be around. And as I've said, there's tiers now. Like this weekend's fight night is much better than your typical Apex fight night. So it will be there for the foreseeable future. But no way. They're not going to give up, you know, a Paris card here, an Austin card there. Um, what's another place where they, uh, they did a fight night and it wasn't, um, you know, there's talk of Dublin, there's talk of, um, going to Asia, like th those, you know, they were in Singapore. Um, no, those are always going to be a thing. And they were always a thing back in the day. Apex will be a thing, but they're not, they're not phasing those out. No way. Connor. Dana recently said on the critically acclaimed Nelk podcast that they were potentially working on a super fight not involving Conor McGregor. Do you have any idea what fight they could be alluding to? Prayer is E3, perhaps someone from Bellator coming over to the UFC, Nate Dustin. Uh, not Nate Dustin, I can assure you of that. And Pereira is E3, I, I've not heard anything of that, and that would surprise me a little bit. Someone from Bellator coming over, I haven't heard that. Uh, I saw the, the, the write-ups about that, but I don't know... I don't know anything about who he's talking about there, to be honest. Um, but definitely not Nate Dustin, even though I'd love to can see I, that. Go ahead. Can I ask you a larger question? Yeah. Uh, shout out to my guy, Jacob, uh, who asked me this and I didn't know the answer. What is a super fight anymore? What do we actually consider a super fight? When I read that, I said to myself, what's even like, what is the scope of possibility here? I don't even know what super fights mean anymore. It used to be like, champion going up a weight class right or like we're gonna get gsp versus bj Penn. that's a super fight and now it's like that's kind of like the commonplace that's kind of the regular i don't even know what a super fight actually means anymore it's also a little bit of a of a indictment on like the lack of superstars right sure a, like, there's a lot of great it, fighters super I don't know fight how many measured superstars by, are um yeah i mean let's just go through the champions right because i i would imagine a super fight would involve champions would it not I don't know. I'm I'm truly at, like I I don't actually know the answer. I'm asking you, what would be a super fight? John Jones' involvement against Stipe feels super fight ish, but it's also just a regular title fight at this juncture. Um, I'm gonna put Jones to the side because he's gone for a while. Pereira, I guess the only super fight that could involve Pereira would be Izzy, and that's not a super fight. He fought twice. Yeah, that's not a super fight. Twice. Uh, Strickland. Fighting Pereira is not a super fight. Leon fighting Strickland or Islam fighting Leon, any, those don't feel like super fights. Um, is Bellator versus UFC a super fight? No. Yeah, because then they'd just be bringing them in, right? Like, I don't yeah, know. No. I, I, I Truly, when I read the headline, I was like, what are the possibilities here? I actually have no idea what this could possibly be. Not like, didn't have one inclination. Because I don't know what that even means at this point. 115 champ versus 120. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't see anything. Unless I'm missing something here, uh, I really don't see anything that would fall under that category. Mm, Sean O'Malley. I mean, we know he's fighting. Yeah. I For no me, idea. it would have to be... You know what I would consider a super fight? Deontay Wilder versus uh, Francis Ngannou in MMA. That is what I would consider a super fight. Like it would have to be something completely out there, off the wall bananas like that for yeah. me to be like, sure, super fight. But you're right. I don't even the original, like, the original super fight for me, or not original, but you know, 
BJ Penn versus GSP was a super fight. Hoist Gracie yeah. against Matt Hughes at UFC 60 was a super fight. Um, yeah. The much talked about GSP Anderson Silva fight was a super fight. Uh, Connor versus. It has to be something that's like not in the flow of like the standard sport. Yeah. Connor versus Floyd, in my super fight. Um, yeah. Yeah. I don't see anything at the moment. Maybe I'm missing something, but I don't see anything. Um, not to say that they aren't working on something, but I just, I don't know what it is. Peter. What's the story, Ariel? What's the story? I hope you and the family are all good. My question this week is Khalil Roundtree Jr. was scheduled to fight a 13-0 Russian this weekend, but he pulled out close to the card. We put too much stake in the undefeated record. Mm, what is he trying to say? That the 13-0... Do we put too much stake in the undefeated record? Uh, I, don't, I don't really understand the question, but I don't feel like MMA does that. I feel like unlike boxing, it's one of the good things about MMA. You lose a fight, no one writes you off. Um, like I, I don't feel like undefeated is a big part of the selling, especially for the guys coming up. Like if someone's twenty-seven and zero, like Habib, they build it up as twenty-seven and zero. But the zero doesn't mean as much in MMA as it does in boxing, at least in my opinion. And and what I mean by that is they don't. It's not like a selling point. 13-0 Russian fighting Khalil Roundtree, like, you know, that's that's just a, a fight on the card. Um, there are some great fighters who have several losses on their record, and no one thinks less of them. I don't know. Frank, do you understand the question here, or are you just throwing them up there, you know? I thought maybe it would make more sense to you. Yeah, sure. Uh, DC2, hello, Ariel and crew. You guys have been fantastic. Oh, sorry. You guys have been having fantastic guest lists recently, and specifically interviews... Uh, with Eddie Alvarez and Sean O'Malley where their future opponents join live for a small segment is badass. Knowing that you guys have relationships inherently from meeting and conversing with fighters like both Sean O'Malley and Cheeto, I was wondering what the emotions are like for you journalists when they are locked in the cage together come fight night. Are you nervous to see either lose when you enjoy both or do you root for any particular storyline? I mean, if I, I, I really don't root. The only thing I root for is uh, who's easier to get on the show. If there's anything that I'm rooting for, uh, but I'm not sitting there going like, come on, get like Cheeto and O'Malley. Is a per I, li I like both of them very much. Uh, I don't wish any harm on them. I want them to have great success. No real like horse in that race, so to speak. Also for the parlay boys, what do you guys expect the emotions to be like when Juliana Pena steps in the octagon for her next title fight? As always, have a great rest of the week show. I will admit... The one time where I felt like sick to my stomach watching a fight was actually DC Stipe um, 3 because then we were like all in on the show. Uh, we had been doing it since March. This fight was in August. I couldn't go because of the pandemic when we weren't traveling and uh, it was hard to watch because then at that point I was, you know, open with our relationship and, you know, the friendship and all that stuff. And, and that was the closest I ever felt to... However, you know, I, I've heard family members talk about their life. I can't imagine a wife watching her husband compete. I can't imagine a husband watching his wife compete. I can't, like what Dan Hardy's going to do this weekend, can't imagine. Now, maybe it's easier because he's cornering Veronica so he could be there and, you know, help her out with nerves. Cannot imagine what those nerves are like. I mean, I just, I can't. Absolutely. I mean, the nerves, the stress, the anxiety can't imagine uh do you guys think you'll have that feeling when juliana fights uh yeah yes yeah oh yeah is is that's, is that's there that's our girl right there rick is there one fighter that makes you more nervous than others no i mean it when i early days it was obviously bj penn yeah uh now no I, I don't have that investment anymore you know we've been working in this sport so long i think the the idea of like the fandom goes further and further away as you um, as you learn more about it and and know everybody, right? Like, and all of a sudden, it's not as easy to just be like, yeah, that's my favorite person. Like, you, uh, yeah, it, I I don't have anybody like that anymore. GC, uh, I mean, I got I got some guys that I cheer for harder than others, but no, nah, no one that I'm like pins and needles nervous for. Because, like Rick says, like you know everybody now. Mm -hmm. uh, like I remember when I was first starting up as a fan, like even in title fights, I would only know one half of it. So I wouldn't, I would just be cheering for one guy as hard as I could. Now it's like, you sort of know everyone. Other than Jake Paul, anyone for you, Frank? <laughs> I mean, I mean, it's Serrano, right? Yeah, gotta be. 
Uh, Kayla. Mark Goddard. Shout out. And Herb Dean, <laughs> the refs. So. The refs for Frankie. I mean, they really are putting themselves out there. It's weird. You say Jake Paul, Amanda, Kayla. You're like an all PFL guy. It sure seems that way, huh? Do you N- see my shirt today? No. PFL shirt. Is it really? <laughs> Absolutely. It's actually a Don Davis shirt. Love it. Wow, with his face on it? Yeah, shout out. Double D. Uh, and I also think yes. that... I was just going to say the individualism of the sport, right? makes it different. Cause like you're a Knicks fan, there's turnover, there's different people coming in it gives you the, like you can root for the squad without feeling like there's a bias toward individual player, you know, individual players and things like that in MMA, the players are the teams. So now all of a sudden it's like, I mean, the, uh, the fighters are the teams. Now all of a sudden it's like, if I root for this team, now I'm rooting against this team and it's a person and it becomes different. Like I feel like the, that element of it makes it very hard especially working in the sport. I get most nervous when it's a combination of uh, stakes in a fight and like how much I know or think I know what's going to happen. So like Mm. Aspinall Pavlovich, I had no idea what was going to happen. Monster stakes, MSG. Like that's when I get nervous. Like, uh, you know, Heart starts beating faster. It's like the goosebumps. Yeah, it's like... The goosebumps instead of the... Yeah, yeah, it's like almost nervy excitement. But, like, that's when I most get, like, whoa, this is crazy (laughs) lock-in. Can't can't turn away from the screen is when when the stakes get higher and I have no idea what's about to happen. Can we also talk about Dan Boyle making an appearance during the... Yeah, it was big stuff. I mean... Yeah, I mean, also, can we talk about you nailing that he won the cup with the Lightning? Yeah, I remember having... We won't address the 3 verse 22 thing, but that was was very impressive. But I knew he was defense, and I was like, ah, why did I think 3? I associate 3... Um, and I, I remember him being on the Canadian team, 2010, uh, Vancouver. I was there, uh, the golden goal, Sidney Crosby. Uh, but like how random is that DC in a, in a golf cart with Dan Boyle? Also him just bailing on the game. DC? Like, yeah. I mean, on uh, ninth hole, he's just like, peace y'all drop me off. D- you know, didn't grab his clubs. The nothing. whole thing made me very, just, just, just I've got to say, and I've down. long, you know, I've on this show, you've come to us and you've asked us like, hey, where do you think I stand with DC? Where do you think relationship is? And we've kind of read the tea leaves and pointed to things. I will say today was a big step. That was a big step. Today, him stepping out of the golf <clears throat> game to to come sit down and spend an hour with his old friend. Why, why couldn't he have told me that he was playing golf that time? It was intentional. And, see, now, Listen, let's, see, now let's you're... Let's chalk it up to him, you know, slow play in front of him. He thought he was going to be at the turn right at 2 o'clock. Yeah. The the people in front of him were taking forever, so he was still on the ninth hole. And they said, you know what? I'm not even going to finish the ninth. Take you think that was big? Class. You're taking yeah. it for granted. Big Can move. you imagine he, if he, he just came He stepped out on? of his love yeah, no. to spend time with you. He stepped out of what he loves to spend time with I think with we you. really would have been in some trouble if he was just like, give me one sec. I got to hit this shot. One sec. Hold on. Sorry. One sec. I kind of wanted to see it in action. I think we would have been. If, no, if, no, you did not. If he did that, you would have, you would have lost your mind. If he was, if he was trying to still yeah, play the holes right. and Speaking stepping which, in and out. If he had come on and he said, I was supposed to golf today, but I decided not to, to do this interview. You wouldn't believe him. And you would have. That would have meant a lot. to see it. That is true. Yeah. If he was like, I canceled my, my golf plans for you. Showing like, oh, it's you. It's probably raining outside. I think that was all part of the plan. Like, I'm getting out of the cart. You think you think he wanted Big to day. show. Yeah. The smile the on love, his face. The loyalty. And then he Big knew it was, was good. Yeah, it was a great conversation. He said, it, he said, it, you know, an hour long conversation flew by. I thought it was good stuff. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Minutes. And then he I looks mean, at he, it and goes, how long have we been talking? And you said like 50 minutes. He's like, let's go more. Don't no, I care. think I Let's think he was like, "We got to wrap this up." Here. <laughs> I got to the get water. Out. I'm no, talking no, no. too much. Opposite, opposite. He right. was trying to stick around with his with his pal. Very I'm, I, was, uh, I, I was impressed by DC. Today. Hearing his respect for people that have won Olympic medals is uh, is cool. Yeah, like him knowing how hard it is. It's it's cool to hear the respect. One thing I learned from DC back in the day: you never say former Olympic gold medalist. Always an Olympic champion. Always, always. Um, Andrew from Alaska. Hello, Ireland crew. All of the conversions or conversations, I think he means, about PFL and illegal elbows has got me thinking, if there were ever to be a unified rules of MMA, what rule that is only present in one promotion would you want to see included? Example, ground and knees in one championship, no elbows in PFL, hydration testing in one championship. Thank you for everyone's hard work to bring us to the show every week. I mean, uh, I don't... Ground and knees, I, I know the, the freaking... The hipsters will love this. I don't need, I'm not dying for ground knees. Uh, certainly not dying for soccer kicks. The no elbows thing is not my cup of tea. Um, 
the hydration testing. I don't even know what that is, to be honest. I'm still confused by it. It doesn't even make a lot of sense to me. Uh, I like the rules that we have here in America for the most part. Um, like the rules that you see in Bellator or UFC, those to me are the, uh, the best version, really. I don't, I don't really need, like the ground and knees, no. No, yeah. I'm sorry if that's a boring answer, but I think what we get here in North America is totally fine. Uh, Slava, last one. Hey, Ariel. I was watching PFL last week, and to my utter shock, I saw that the ref in one of the bouts was Mario Yamasaki. Yes. I know the commissions choose the officials, not the UFC, but I figured after the UFC blackballed him, he'd be done. I don't know. I, I don't really know what happened there, so I don't even know if blackballed is uh, a fair thing to say, but obviously he wasn't one of their favorites, just like... Um, Steve Mazzagatti wasn't one of their favorites. Is he making a comeback or have you seen him at other major events? Do you know if he still has the belief system of letting people get beat to a pulp so they could go down like warriors as always? Thanks for being awesome. Mario Yamasaki is a DC guy. He and his brother have multiple gyms in DC and that event was in DC. And so a uh, very good chance that he has relationships with the commission. I know he's worked at other DC events. Uh, they're in DC. Maybe he doesn't want to travel anymore but he's down to do it if it's, uh, you know, a local event. So uh, that's why you saw him there. Um, he's a local guy. He's uh, a fixture in the DC martial arts community and obviously has good relationships with the commission. And yes, you are right. The commissions here in America, they choose who um, will ref, who will judge, as opposed to some jurisdictions, some countries overseas. Uh, and so I know the UFC can say certain things or the promotion can't say, we don't want this person. We don't want that person. But for the most part, who is deciding who goes where and who does what it is the state commission. And he's a DC guy with DC roots and DC ties. And that's why you saw him there. Um, and I don't suspect that you're going to see him at other events across the country. Cause I don't think that that's what he is focusing on these days because he has his schools with his brothers. Uh, with his brother, excuse me. All right, great questions. Thank you very much to everyone who sent them in. Appreciate y'all very much.